I have to tell you a story to start off. Okay, I'm scared. Don't be, don't be that scared. Okay, guys, I'm so excited. This episode in hell is going to be chaotic per usual. I mean, this chick is so perfect for this pod, and I've been manifesting her coming on. She's here. She's literally the same as online. It's crazy. I was hoping. It's. I mean, it depends on who you are, but, like, she is re real recognized real, as my shirt says right now. I like that. So, Ken, I've seen you before in the wilds. Which is kind of crazy. Wait, in real life? In real life. Oh my God, what the fuck was I, I doing? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that word? Yes. Okay. Because we're fucking wild. Okay, hell. I just want to make sure before like they're like, beep, beep. Like, they're like, we have to cut all of that Beeps out. are funny yeah. though sometimes. <laughs> so I'm at the airport. I don't remember where I was going. Maybe LA, maybe Austin. I'm a lost squirrel. So, but I was in the airport and your voice is distinct. Oh. It's the kind of thing where I was like, I now need to listen to everything this girl's about to say. I was here, you were sitting like a little over there just waiting for to get on this plane. Um, and you're talking to this stranger who is like fascinated by you. Like it was like a full podcast. Like they were asking you all these questions and you were giving, you were serving. Like they were like, so, like it was this like random dude who seemed nice, he was kind of artsy and you were just having, you were like, I'm from a farm and then, and I was like fully into this and I didn't <laughs> oh know who you were God. at the time. The fact that <laughs> this is so fucking on brand for me because I get myself in these situations all the time where like, I become like friends with someone for like five minutes, never see them again. No, literally, you know, it's like this. This dude seemed nice, like it wasn't creepy at all, and I could tell that you were just like bored and want to talk shit. Where I'm more like I'm very New York, where I'm like if I don't know you, don't speak to me. I don't want to talk to anyone. But I was like I'm invested now in this conversation, so I sat there like a creep, and I learned so much about you. And I was like, wait, this girl's. But at first, you mentioned like TikTok, and I was like, kind of like, okay, oh, this girl posts on TikTok. Because like I was on TikTok, and I'm like, who the fuck is this bitch posts on TikTok? And then I'm like, so I have one million followers. On TikTok. He's <laughs> no, like, you okay. literally just were like, yeah, I'm a TikTok. I create on TikTok. And then he was asking you about brands and shit, and you mentioned Steve Madden, and I was like, wait. Is this girl like legit? So my little crazy FBI brain. Yeah. While you're right there, I'm like, I think I was like TikTok, Steve Madden. You pop up and I'm like, okay, Kennedy. <laughs> so then I would not talk to you ever, but I was like, okay, support other female content creators. Follow, follow. I follow all your accounts. And then I'm like, I'm going to follow this girl's journey. How long? Fast ago? forward, maybe a year ago. Fast forward. Here we are together. That is literally insane though that you heard me talking. About. I need to shut the fuck up actually. You if do. there's anything this conversation <laughs> has taught me, it's to like shut up because you know how embarrassing it was that I was like, so I'm a TikToker and like the people around me are probably like, oh my God. But also like, let's, you are young and yeah, you're I'm living a you. very exciting life right now. People think that I'm fucking older than that all the time. I'm like, well, I want to be in my youth as long as I can. I want to be 17 forever. So the fact that people are like, I know 22 is young, but I want to be 17. I want to be like not True. being like Your 20s honestly are the fucking worst. Really? I mean, uh, it gets better? Yes. Oh, okay. I mean, like, your 20s, like, all the shit that you're going through is making you the person you're going to be when you're 30. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I might be a really bad person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're I've not. I've been a through a lot lately. I'm like, feel like I'm 28. I'm biased, though, because you could literally, like, burn down an entire, like, house. But the fact that you have cats and a pit bull, I'm like, that girl can do no wrong. Thank you. I'm a big animal lover. Um, the Reddit likes to say that I am an animal hoarder, so. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, I got three cats and a dog. The fuck? I'm like, how's that an animal hoarder? So I'm going to age myself, but I have a husband. Shut up. I know. I have a husband. He's 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 47. And his one piece of advice to me, he's like this comedian been in the game forever. Like, we'd get into fights about it. He'd say, stop reading the fucking comments oh, no. if you want to have a long-term career in this industry. But it depends on the person. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, because we're getting fucking real. Yeah. They know you're looking. It feeds them to want to talk more. Is this a game you're playing with them? Sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it's a game. Like, I, I literally stayed <laughs> off the Reddit after, like, uh, the first week that I knew it was out, it was, I think it was because, like, I was, like, fighting with my boyfriend or whatever, and so everyone was invested in, like, what was going on. It started with good intentions, you, I believe. You wanted to keep tabs on Yeah, they like... wanted to keep tabs on me, and I was like, okay, whatever, like, reading it. Then they said some, like, random shit, like, oh, she's from, like, the nicest farmlands in Pennsylvania. <laughs> first of all, Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Cabot, Pennsylvania, shout out to Ambrose Farm. That, if you think that is a bougie farm, it's a tin. It's like a little tin box. So after that, I was like, I'm not doing it again. It's just giving me too much anxiety. I had to like literally go on anxiety medication because I was like on Same. it all the time. But yeah. now, damn, that Wellbe Trend Lexapro mix. Ah, I was gonna ask you about it, bitch. I feel nothing. I was like, bring it, bitches. Bring so it. I was on Paxil for like ever. And, but I've never had like a real person diagnose me. Yeah. So I talked to someone, I'm like, I definitely have ADHD, whatever. And they were like, first of all, you can't get pregnant on Paxil. Your babies will like, it won't work. Shut up. So I was like, 
I'm not at a place where like, who, I'm so bad with my birth control. Who knows what's going to come out of my pussy? <laughs> so I was like, so there, I'm, I'm like currently switching to Lexapro this moment. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, I'm not going to lie. When I first tried Lexapro, like the first day on it, I was like going insane. I don't know what happened, but like that was like my body. I remember just like laying in my bed being like, I want to hurt somebody. Yeah. But then it was fine. Like three days later, I was cool. Okay, then good. I went zombie mode though. Mm. No emotions. Like mm-hmm. you could tell me literally anything and I'd be like, cool. Like you could say your house is on fire and I'd be like, Okay. A lot of houses are on fire in this episode so I far. Know. And I'm, I'm kind like, of into it. It's, it's hell, hell, bitch. I was going to say it's hell. I was like, that th- makes the most sense. So why do you have the Wellbutrin? Because I heard it helps with ADHD. The Wellbutrin, um, I will say, like, the second she put me on that mixed with it, I, I know I'm like, they're like, oh, it takes longer to feel it. I don't know if it was a placebo. I was on one. When I tell you, like, within three days of being on Wellbutrin, I was on my shit. I went from being, like, you couldn't get a hold of me all day. I was yeah. just, like, sitting on my couch doing nothing. <laughs> Like texting Haley, like these are my outfits and I'm paying for this trip. Like, what do you think about them? And she's like, Jesus. Are we SSRI influencers right now? I might she goes, be. try that well butrin. I see if be. it works with your doctor. Yeah, check out with the doctor. Check out Yeah, with we're not diagnosing. First. But I love that you're open about it. Also, I, I told you I love you. The two things I love most in life are cats mm-hmm. and pit bulls. And you I got one? Well, we were fostering. <gasps> I've always wanted to foster. This is the thing about fostering. If you adopt, you save one. If you foster, you save money. And also, they don't die on you. That's that's a good thing. Because I, I'm like saying this right now. No. I've only had, no. One, <laughs> I've only had a couple, like two animals die in my life. And they were all like childhood pets that just died like last year. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to survive if these animals die. Because like they're my whole life. Especially yeah. my cat. Yeah. Mango. Mango. Especially if Mango Mr. dies. Mr. Mango. Mr. Mango. I'm like, I'm going to be fucked. He died. I was like, oh my God, this is bad. But I, I kind of like had, a, I had another cat that I bought a month before Mango died. And he was like, looks exactly like Mango. So in my mind, I, I still call him Mango to this day. I'll call Manx Mango. I'll be like, Manx Mango. And I'm like, fuck. Well, maybe. Because they look alike. Maybe his spirit. Yes. <laughs> it healed me somehow. I'm like, I'm like, oh, Mango's like literally right there. So now I'm like, I'm not prepared for whenever my animals that I have right now die. Like, these are mine. These are my, like, I feel like I birthed these ones. The other ones were like <laughs> my childhood friend. Yes. These ones I feel like literally came out of me. No, Even mom, literally. She's fi- well, she's like five years old and I feel like she's my fucking mother. She just has this energy about her. That's like she pays rent. Like she puts her belly out. She gives no fucks. I'm like, I She's did the not. the mom of the house. She is. I didn't even mean to get her either. Like I was at the shelter one day mm-hmm. and we were just like going for the event because that shit like brings me up. Yes. You know what I mean? Just like yes. looking. First of all, all these dogs are barking like crazy and I'm, I'm a cat girl. So I'm yep. like, mm, mm-hmm. fuck this. Like they're all like, ah. So then I'm like. You're like, calm it I, down. Yeah. I'm like, this shit is scaring me. Like, I'm ready to leave. Mm-hmm. And then I see this like short, because she's like literally a foot off the ground. She's short and she's built like a pig. Yes. Imagine a pig. Yes. So I'm like, wait, you're kind of funny. And her name's Luna Marie. I was like, I kind of. And she was kind of sarcastic. No, yeah. Like, she was just sitting there. <laughs> all the other dogs are barking. And she's like, and I'm like, let me take you out. Took her out. She literally didn't give a fuck. Like, I was like, I love you. And she was like, okay. And I was like, all right. So then I went around the shelter a little bit more, came back for her, and I heard somebody else basically saying that they wanted to like take her out on a walk. I was like, hell no. I was like, I'll take her. How, I'll take her. how old was she? Five. Yeah. I'm crying. I'm like, who would rehome her? And to this day, like, she's like this, she hates other dogs. She does, she mm-hmm. does hate, especially big dogs. Yes. But she loves my cats. She yes. loves people. <gasps> she's an angel. I'm like, who would get rid of her? So I, when I met my husband, it was over the pandemic and he was fostering pit bulls. How many? Like, it, he would do like two or three weeks with each one. It was so hot because I was like, if he can handle that pit bull. Oh, no. He can, ha- oh, he he can, can handle me. anything. But let's be honest. Pit bulls are fucking soft. No, they are. You're like, you're like, I fucking badass. Like, walking down the street with this big ass pit bull. And then, like, in the, in the house, she's like sleeping on me. She's like, <sighs> they're the most cuddly little babies. But I would joke because this one pit bull would have like witching hour. Yeah. And he would call oh, me God. during witching hour and he'd be like, I miss you, babe. And then he'd be like, Flynn, shut the fuck up. And like, they're like, just, I'm telling you. <laughs> some dogs was it an older dog did they have did it have dementia it it, it def, or it was tra- he'd have these like traumatized dogs yeah they have anxiety and at night they would like just go nutty <laughs> they'd be ripping up everything and they're going crazy and he was he was stern with them and yeah. i was like that's what i fucking need i need someone being stern, stern. with me cuz i'll take a, i'll fucking fuck around oh, bullshit people me i need too. someone keeping it real i'm like i could have been a great salesperson <laughs> yeah i was i, I was a cold calling sales bitch shut up out of school right you, you back in like, the day it, that's all you call did? Them, just, you call people up? Oh, did you make an insane amount of calls though a day? Yes, but I kind of had this like quality over quantity quant, quality over quantity thing and then I would email a lot. Oh God, you were professional. You I were lasted professional. a year and a half, so I was a Hall of Famer um, <laughs> in the industry. They still talk about me. Um, but yeah, have you watched Michael Vick's, the documentary about Michael Vick's? No, doesn't the guy who fought the fucking pitbulls? Yes, it's called Champions. I don't, I don't even know who I want to see. I'll be sick to myself. Nope, it's going to blow your mind. They 
they take all of the pit bulls that he was using as fighters and everyone's like, they should kill them all. They're these fighting pit bulls. And they fight and they say, no, these dogs are traumatized and they need therapy. I'm going to cry. They need therapy. So they take these dogs and they show them like going through like therapy, getting fosters. And all the dogs were the sweetest babies. Some were like still scared of stares because they're just so loyal. It's all yeah. about oh, the no, fucking they owner. Are, they are so extremely loyal. Like, and someone told me that the other day with my dog because I was like, I wonder why someone would get rid of her. Like, she's so sweet. Like, they're, yeah. I just can't imagine getting rid of someone like her. And then someone was like, well, maybe her owner really, like, not a great person brought out the absolute worst in her. Mm -hmm. So then she kind of matched that energy. Mm -hmm. And then with you, like, you were so sweet with her, so calm with her. And so she's she's matching your energy. Yeah. I believe that. These pits, they you watched how, like, they literally were, like, abused kids. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, acting out and stuff. And then they calmed down and they were in these great homes. They did have to kill the most successful one, though, because they are afraid it was going to get bought and, like, traded. Oh. Like, the winning pit. But did when... When you do your TikToks being like, everyone's scared of Ma because of her bark, I'm literally like, speak out for, like, you're such a funny influencer to me. I'm, when I tell you I'm <laughs> fighting so many demons at one time, like, and sometimes it's like, most of the time I'm fighting myself. Like, I, I will literally just get on TikTok and be like, you know what, fuck all of you today, fuck people who do this, do this, and everyone's like, why are you mad? Like, literally, everyone's always like, why is she so angry all the time? I'm like, I don't know. I'm fighting mad demons in my head. So TikTok gives me an outlet to speak out on those demons, uh -huh. and then you deal with stupid people in the comments, they're making me, they're feeding into it. I'm like, stop feeding the demon. Well, that's why I said I was like, yeah, they're annoying the fuck out of you, but at some point it's giving you great content. Oh, and then it's like, I read this shit and I'm like, wait, what? Someone Someone's said the other day, they were like, she's she's trying. <laughs> My assistant got on there the other day because we were like, I just need to know. I just need to know what they're saying about me. Like, let me know if there's anything like that crazy. And he was like, well, this is kind of interesting. Like, they said that you think you're giving yourself acne to be like relatable. Like, she's never had acne before. Like, I, first of all, I have had acne before. Like, hello, are you kidding me? They obviously haven't watched like my first videos and they're like, I think she like maybe hormones or something. Who the fuck would- They're like you, trying to make you scar girl, you but think, you're like, it's no. not there. I'm like, you think I care that much about being relatable? Like, hell no. I would rather have the most flawless face, perfect mm -hmm. as fuck, than to be relatable. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, maybe I'm uh, I'm relatable because I'm ugly. Like, I'd rather- <laughs> I, You think I chose this fun card? I'm just doing the cards that I was dealt with. I'm playing with those. Okay? Wait, when you became a redhead, I feel like they bullied you out of being a redhead. Oh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> the first time I did it, I was like, you know what? I look so, like, good. You were so confident. And by the end, you were like, I know it doesn't go with my skin tone, bitches. Yeah. Literally, I was like, before any of you say shit, I already know. You know, it's like, I hate when they say stuff that I know. It's like, yeah, my hair's washed out. And then you get comments that are like, your hair's washing out. Yeah, no shit. Like, thank you for acknowledging the absolute obvious. Dude, people on TikTok, I didn't even know I should be insecure about some shit. Oh. They told me my natural lip color is too pale. That's a thing. And I was like, I didn't know that was something. I didn't even know that was something to even worry about. Now I'm freaked out. I didn't out. know people. Yeah, now, now I'm you, freaked out. You better get yours checked out. Oh my God. But it's it's insane. But I feel like you in your young 20s have the energy to deal with that shit. Oh yeah. You're like, I'm over this. I'm, I'm over it. Anymore. But I do have to say that my husband, why am I bringing up my husband so much? I'm I know, so she's in love. I'm like, I'm like, but I occasionally have to show him content to keep him young, you know, like right. keep him in the know. You, something, I'm not even going to get into what the actual drama was, but you were in a point where people were trying to start like a real like hate campaign against you because you like messed up one thing that was very like flippant and very like no one, everyone's fine. And you basically were like, <laughs> People spend. Oh, you're, people I know spend, exactly what you're talking people about. People spend fifteen thousand dollars on a PR company yeah. to have them craft the perfect PR response because something. You go on and you vent. I don't even know what you said, but I showed it to my husband, and and he's very into like ignore everything, and he goes. Wow, she said that perfectly. And I'm like, I can never say, you said what all of us are thinking. Well, that's what I mean. I'm like, everybody's thinking it. And a lot of people are just like too scared to say it because I feel like, especially with like cancel culture, everyone's so scared to speak up against it. Like, I feel like we've almost molded into this thing where we're like, we have to, as like a social media person or whatever, you have to like be who they want you to be. Yes. And I'm like realizing now, like, fuck that. Because they're like, we made you, we own yes. you. Yes, there's this weird. And we will take it away if we want to. Yes, it's that. And they do think they own you. And it's the weirdest thing ever. And it's like, no, I've learned that people will come and go. I've had people stick with me since 2020. I've had people leave. I had people come back. Like, I am no longer worried about that. And guess what? It's all full circle because then I maybe I can't do this anymore. Or whatever. I don't. I'm not uh -huh. influencer anymore. Uh -huh. So I just start posting whatever the fuck I want, like I used to. Uh -huh. And then I gain more followers again. And uh -huh. everyone's like, "We love this girl. She's so relatable." And you know what I mean? It's a full circle thing. You're wise as shit. It's a full young, circle thing. You're wise as shit because it, it took me. I like I'm a comedian now, but I used to do reality TV. And you know, everyone loves you. And then everyone started to hate me. And I was like, my life's over. My career's over. Everyone fucking hate. And then I go. 
oh wait, I guess just start posting comedy now. Yeah. And now no one even knows me from the reality no, show. No, everyone knows you as a comedian. And everyone was like, so I was like, holy fuck, if I just if I believe that whatever those people thought of me at the time was real, yeah, I would have I would have been just you know I might have had actually like a pitbull sanctuary somewhere in my yeah. Wyoming, but <laughs> which, which it's not very, too late for that though. We're, are we are we gonna do that? Yeah, I would do it. I would do it. I would love it. I always wanted to do like an animal, like I wanted to do like a little cat cafe or something like that. Oh but God. I would be keeping all the cats. And There's a cat cafe around the corner. I'll I'll hook you guys up. Here? With it. Yeah, it's like this cool Japanese. Pl- oh, it's so fucking cool. I want a cat cafe, but I also do want to somehow have pit bulls involved. Oh, I want to have like everything, <laughs> any type of animal except for horses. I'm like kind of scared of those. But it's funny, like you come, like all I want is a farm, but I'm from Brooklyn, so I like don't even know how to milk a cow. You're like, yeah, but you're from farm life, but oh, now you're in Austin. Life. I don't know how to milk a cow. However, mm-hmm. um. Like, don't judge. Don't, yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I'm going to write on Reddit and say you're like a fake farm girl. Yeah, she like, no, she doesn't even know how to milk a cow. First of all, it's a fucking produce farm. Do your research. Okay, I worked in the store part. I did, I have picked things before. I've picked watermelon. I part, I've picked kale, tomatoes. You know, I've done it, but I worked in the store part. And because I'm originally from like Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. Pitts, Pittsburgh. I say Pittsburgh. I'm like 45 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. But okay. No one okay. needs to know that. No. That's why I like, I just, I mean, Pittsburgh. She's a liar. Until but... I meet someone who's like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> what borough? Like, I'm yeah, right there. Yeah. I'm like, um, it's this, like really small town called. I went to like Knock High School. They're like, never heard of that. I'm like, it's, it's just kind of far away, actually. It's, it's like 20 minutes times three. Yeah, it's not um, really close. <laughs> <laughs> but it helps for some d- dummy like me to be like, okay, right. around Pittsburgh area. But this speech you gave, just so people know, you basically were like, look, if you guys hate me, you hate me. And if you like me, you like me. And if my career ends today, I'm fine. You guys win. Whatever, cool. And then I remember just feeling afterward like that was the most perfect thing said. I actually paid a PR company when I was dealing with like online bullying and stuff, and they basically were like, "Stay away from your phone and don't say anything." And I'm like, "That's what I'm paying you guys for." Yeah, to, to give me that advice to not say anything from two girls who all I want to do is ex- talk shit. And I, I'm also like weirdly like a justice warrior. Like I'm always like fighting for like the right to fight, right. and it gets so fucking annoying because like you never win. No, you're not. That's the thing. As I, I, mean, I know that I know I'm never gonna win. <laughs> But I'm still going to fucking fight it out, right? Like, I'm still going to let people know where I stand. Like, you basically were like, you guys win. I'm like, and you like, but you like won out. Afterwards, I was like, Des, that was the most, that was the best thing I've ever, because no one ever gives a good apology. I'll eat these bitches up. No one ever gives a good apology. They like, they think, I don't know. I feel like they get so worried. Like, oh, well, good luck. That's a brand's not going to like it if you're eating us up all the time. And I'm like, okay, well then guess what? I'll start my own brand. What's going to happen then? What happens when I'm CEO? Nothing. <laughs> like, you can't do shit when I'm the CEO. Like, I'm the CEO of Kennedy York LLC, okay? And that's all that matters. But speaking of which, I did hire a PR team. I also have PR. Yes. However, I think I just give them a headache, you know? Like, it's not, n- nothing's bad though. I've never gotten like a, oh my God, you can't post that. I just like do things like however I want. And I'm like, and then you go, okay, guys, just yeah. keep an eye on this. Uh, yeah, I'm like, wait, because I was like, her like, PR. Take that video down, please. Like, we P- don't need that. PR team's gonna kill her. Yeah, no. Or maybe we're, they we're understand good. this is part of who you are. They do. They're very like, we know you just like talk out and do whatever. So See, I was in with reality bu- reality TV bullshit where I legally couldn't say things. Oh. So I'd get in trouble with the network. So they were always like, you can't, you can't say that. And I'm like, but everyone, they literally think I did something I didn't do. And they're like, well, you signed this contract. And I'd be like, well, I'll just go fuck myself. I can't do, I, I've already established that I would love to do reality TV, but I realize I also can't do it because if I was like on The Bachelor, for one, mm-hmm. I would literally get on there. <laughs> I would be talking out my ass because I have a lot. I have a lot to say. I, my words per minute is, is a lot. So like, I just know it could cut up that shit so fast. I'd be the villain. Like, no one. I would not be America's sweetheart on there. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, "This bitch is crazy." Well, it's so easy to like this conversation right now. We're having so much fun, right? Yeah. All they have to do is cut to me and confessional, being like, "Ken was so annoying," <laughs> and you're just annoying. No, exactly. Or if they cut to me being like, "I've never bonded with someone like that in my life," I would be like, oh, "Everyone's like, oh my god, I love them." They coordinate the narrative. No, it is. That's like but scary. But your crew is exciting. Because, like, you have it at the palm of your fingertips. Like, you can... Did you know you were going to be entrepreneurial? Hmm. I always knew I was going to be my own boss. But yeah. I thought I was just, like, going to do nothing. You know? <laughs> like, I was like... Um, boss of your emotions. No, seriously. Like, growing up, I was like, um, I'm going to be famous. First of all, I always said that as a kid. I was like, I'm going to be yeah. famous. I remember in high school, like, people would be like, oh, everyone's like, I'm going to Penn State. I'm going to whatever. Like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, I don't know. I'm going to be famous. Like, you guys just see. And then it's so funny. In 2020, like, when our college was, like, getting shut down because of COVID, the guy used to sit next to an anthropology, shout out Chase. I remember, like, we were watching TikToks, and I was like, that's going to be me someday. Like, I'm fucking putting my money on it. And then now here we are. I manifested everything that happened to me. Like, yes, I thought I was going to be, like, 
like, you know, maybe like a, mm-hmm. a like an actress and mm-hmm. I'm a mediocre TikToker, but that's okay. You got to mm-hmm. start somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. You got to mm-hmm. start somewhere. So it's not exactly <laughs> what I had imagined for myself. Like, you know, talking about shitting my pants on the But internet. also we grew up not with TikTok influencers. So you didn't even know no. what you could manifest. No. Like, so I'm just like, I'm going to be doing something that I don't have to work. And my parents were like, yeah, well, you're either going to get a job or you're going to go to community, community college. Yeah. So I went to community college, made them happy and then dropped out. So... I'm literally obsessed with you. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with you because it's so fucking empowering. And also online, yeah, you go from like full fashion girly, like full fashion girly. We got, we got side to full like diarrhea extravaganza. So explain that to people when they're like, what, what, what kind of content? It's called this? being multifaceted. It's called being a multi hyphenate. Okay. I, yeah, write that down. She's a multi hyphenate with diarrhea fashion. <laughs> like literally. Animal adoption. The the diarrhea thing, you honestly wouldn't believe how empowering it is, I guess. Like, I didn't realize, like, speaking out on shit was, like, going to be, like, that big of a deal. I just thought, like, okay, yeah, everyone poops, whatever. Mm-hmm. It has been so empowering. Like, I have empowered the ladies around me. You know how many times I meet girls at bars and they're like, <laughs> I, too, shit my pants. I, too, like, I hear stories all, every time I meet someone, usually, like, once a night, I'll hear, like, some type of crazy pooping my pants story. Mm-hmm. But isn't that way more fun than, like, gossiping? I mean, gossiping is fun, but, like... To bond with any girl, like yeah. whenever I'm nervous, I'll go up to a girl and be like, I have to poop. Yeah. And immediately to, like, her walls go down, uh, my walls go down. That's the most vulnerable you could be yeah. with someone. Yeah. And then <laughs> you'll know immediately if you're meant to be friends or not. That's what I mean. Because they kind of give you a weird look at first. You're like, okay, you're not the You're one. like, okay, we you're don't fuck. We can't, I'm not yeah, going to fuck with you. Like that. I respect you, but you don't understand. You're not going to vibe with no, me. No, yeah. That's real why recognize like, real. Everyone always says that when I meet them. They're like, you're just like you are on TikTok. I was like, what, what did you think I was going to be like? Like, did you think I was going to be awkward or did you think I'd be like, well, like the girl who shits her pants it. giving like the side eye to somebody <laughs> like being like please don't talk to me like I'm so like I'm I do TikTok for a living like I'm a lot cooler than you like come on come what's, on what's the Austin like content creator scene like not really much going on to be yeah. honest with you but I like it you know yeah because I like to be I could I'm a Leo I don't think I could survive are you Same. Leo too yeah I don't think Makes I could sense. survive being in like New York City or LA mm-hmm. I don't want to be a small fish in a big pond <laughs> I want to be a large fish in a very small pond <laughs> So living in Austin, there be like there's, there's there's content creators there for sure, yeah. and like there's a lot of I feel like micro influencers kind of on the come up, and like micro influencers are like the shit nowadays. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're it's becoming like a real thing. Yeah. But I feel like nobody is really doing what everyone else is. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing there. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like it's competition at all. It just feels like everyone's like laid back it's and chill, great vintage yeah. shops. But, yeah. Like I don't do anything though, so yeah. I like. I go out on the week. I mean, okay, I get fucked up on the weekends, but yeah. other than that, it's like I sit in my house all day. You yeah. know, sit in my house, wait till the weekends, then recover for the rest of the week. I'm obsessed. That's with what that. you got to do. I'm really obsessed with that. How's your um? I know we we hit on it a little, but how's your like anxiety, depression right now? Honestly, the best that it's ever been. <gasps> yeah, I know, right? Why do you think so? Medication. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being real. Definitely the medication. Um, but no, like I have been on one lately in a good way. But also mm-hmm. I'm like, ugh, people, people on TikTok literally be gaslighting me. People like, when I bought a car, someone's like, she's manic. She bought the car because she's manic. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm also getting a boob <laughs> job in a couple days. I'm also, maybe I am manic. And then I'm like, I might be buying a house next month. Like, wait a minute. Is this is a this, manic yeah, episode? I know. And then I wake or up. Have I'm, you just been working your ass I'm, off and manifesting a great life for yourself? It's a thin like, line. There, no, 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 there is though, because every single day I manifest like the same things in my little book. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, Either they're gassing me into thinking that I'm manic or like I'm going to wake up and be in a blacked out episode and wake up in like three months and be like, I have new boobs. Where am I? I'm driving a new car. Like I just blacked all of that out. Or it's like, yeah, I'm going to be like, yeah, I worked for this. This is what I wanted this whole entire time. I have trouble because I started making money for the first time recently and I, but I still have that like poor mentality. Oh yeah. And then you think when you're spending something, you think you're like an NBA player that's just going to like go broke. Oh, I still have that mentality. I still have that. So yeah, it's a thin line between being like, I'm treating myself versus like, I'm like, you're spending money on strippers on the weekend. Yeah, I know. And you're just like, oh well, no. Don't even say that. I just went to my first strip club ever on Friday and now I'm like, fuck. I'm like, maybe I do have a problem. Did you have fun? At your- oh yeah. And the strippers knew me. A lot of them were like, Ken. I was like, <laughs> get in girly. I was like, let's go girls. I was like, can I take my top off now? Let's like, go girls. I was like, listen, like I want to get up on there. That, sh- that is like a talent. The oh. way they were moving on those poles, they're that athletes. Is not, yeah, that is not easy. Literal Anyone athletes. Anyone says they can be a stripper, you're lying. No. You're lying. That shit, it's hard. No. Uh, uh, nothing against OnlyFans, but like, this is... This is the real... This is real life. Yes. You know, you can't cut it. and You, you have to go... No cutting. Exactly. No, you have to go with it. It's like YouTubers happens, versus stand-up comedians. No, I was... Yeah, no, literally. <laughs> like, you have to be on your feet when you're, you know... 
I would have, if I, like, I, I don't know how I would even react. Like, if something bad happened, they all just looked so natural. Like, they had been practicing, like, it was just a routine, and they probably just went up there and just, like, did their thing. Yep. You know? No, shout out to the strippers. Also, I love stripper talk. Oh, when I get on strip talk, and they're like, <laughs> I, the whole time whenever I was literally at the strip club, I just kept thinking of, like, looking at all their shoes, and I, I got on the side of TikTok where they were, like, cutting up the bottoms of new shoes so they had a good grip. Yes. And I'm like, I wonder if they did that. You know, I wanted to ask them, like, did you do, like, the trick? Because you learn so much shit from there. Yeah, and their lifestyle is just so intense. But yeah, yeah, those girls are fucking awesome. Tell me about these, the boobies. The bo- okay, this was uh, definitely something that just kind of came about. I, you know, I've always wanted a pair of tits. Who doesn't? You know. Mm-hmm. If- but you just like I didn't get mine till you. Oh, you got tits too? No, they're not. They're real. Oh. But like I didn't. I-, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, we got so much in common. I think I didn't get these until eighteen. Okay, I'm 22, so my time has passed. So <laughs> that way, yeah. were you like that, waiting, no. and then you were like, okay, because <laughs> I was flat, 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 and then 18, I just got. I to went through phases. I feel like that I was like, you know, when I was like really younger, you know, you're trying to like wear push up bras, like you're trying to. Yeah, you have like chicken most. cutlets. Yeah, you're like, I need to have the biggest looking boobs ever, especially because yeah. my best friend at the time, beautiful, gorgeous, huge rack. Yes, like we were in the eighth grade, she was like a double D. Like Ugh. she, she, yeah, she was blessed. From I mean, but age. also poor thing, like having. Oh, definitely. Like men look at you like you're an adult. Oh, ex- definitely. She had like a weird. She had a lot of like I ran around like a little chicken her, until so. I was 18. I was yeah, like, no, ah! me too. I look like a, like a 12, I still I look like a 12 year old We have boy. like fun personalities because we didn't get tits. I know. I had to, I had to depend on something. <laughs> you know, like so nowadays I'm so used to hearing like if someone calls me pretty, I'm like, Thank you. Like, I wish, you know, there's like some celebrities that are like, she's only famous because she's pretty. Yeah. You know, that's not me. They can't say that about me. They, yeah, I want to say pe- she's famous for nothing, but like, they can't be like, she's I want people to be like, is she fashionable or is she just pretty? Yeah, they can't, they can't say shit about me. Okay. <laughs> I'm the average looking. That's why I, I want a nose job more than I want a boob job. Like, that was like my thing. I was like, if I get any surgery done, it's going to be my nose job. Uh-huh. But then I'm like terrified of like looking really good with a nose job. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, I lose all my own. And they're like, dude, she's hot now. I don't give a fuck about what she has to say. She's not funny. Because if you're hot, they're like, no, she's not even funny anymore. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I better just keep the nose God gave me and continue having this fucking great personality. Did you care as much how you looked? Or do you care more now that you see yourself in video all the time? And you have people just- I think I care less about how I look, honestly. Surprisingly. Wow. I feel like everyone, you know, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, it tore down my confidence. Mm-hmm. And I feel like something I've always depended on was who I am as a person because I feel like I didn't feel maybe necessarily the most confident on the outside. Mm -hmm. So I never walked into the room being like, I'm a 10 because I'm gorgeous. I walked into the room being like, I'm a 10 because I'm funny as fuck. Yeah. Like I I will tell a joke, you know? So And that energy comes off in your TikToks. Like you command (laughs) attention. Like I'll be scrolling and I'm like, Ken needs to tell me shit. They're like, she's yelling again. (laughs) She's yelling again. Ken has stuff she needs to tell me. And I'm like, I'm here girl. And it's your energy is what really differentiates differentiates you besides the fact that you are also beautiful like yeah i like that it's a side thing though you know i like that it's like funny cute well you know what i mean people who are like too hot are intolerable no i like i can't i literally was saying that the other day i was like scrolling and i was like (laughs) oh my god like i'm so disgusted right now like she this girl's so pretty i might have to block her but i also love seeing like you all dressed up with your girls and i'm like oh like so hot both. and then you'll have the next day when you're like going to target or some shit <laughs> yeah. and you're but you also are not trying to be like looking cute you're like i'm going to target right now i got shit to I'm do not trying to look cute no like you can't look hot 100 percent of the time i like to say i'm part-time hot yeah part-time, no, part-time hot, hot. yeah i agree and i think like yeah just like being depending on my personality that's why i feel like when comments when i did like start getting hate comments about who i was as a person those are the ones that like fucked me up the most because yeah. i was like I depended a lot. I'm like, I'm a, um, and they're like, oh my God, if you're a good person, you don't have to say you're a good person. I'm a good fucking person. Yeah. And I'm funny. Okay. Yeah. That's what does it for me. So I'm like, now I'm just like, oh, whatever. Like I go out and like all the time I meet people like when I'm so scary looking mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is who I am. Like, like, but when people know you for your energy, I feel like you look more beautiful all the time. Does that make sense? Exactly. Like, you know, I, the, the second I feel like I start talking to people, it's like, oh, whoa for them. Like they're not expecting me to be so like, yeah. <sighs> and then I'm in their face and they're like, oh my God. It, that's so shocking to them that they're like they forget about what I even fucking look like they're just like I'm just your energy literally I went into an Uber the one time and this guy does like stand up comedy I guess the Uber driver uh-huh. and so he was like are you I wasn't even making jokes I was, listen I just was got a funny face or something because I was just practicing <laughs> and he goes do you like do acting or whatever and I was like oh no like I don't he's like we well, should be a stand up like I do stand up co- comedy and I host these shows you should come and I was like okay I'm not I'm not a stand up Austin has girl. a decent scene no I know I didn't know that until I met this guy and mm-hmm. he gave me his card if like I ever wanted to hit him up I was like I cannot do stand-up comedy. I have to, like, I can go back and forth with someone. That shit, when you're there by yourself, because I've gone to a com- couple comedy shows. I love them. Could never do it. This is the thing. You are doing your own version of stand-up on your... I mean, sometimes you're not trying to get a joke. You're making, like, a point-point, and I'm like, yeah. 
period. But <laughs> but sometimes like you take it on a journey. Basically, I'm never disappointed with what you're doing on the video. Like, you know, some people, they're like, I have to tell you something crazy. And you're like, I bet this is going to be a waste of my time. Yo, you I know. always pull me in some type of journey. Either I'm sad, I'm pissed off after for you, or I'm laughing. Yeah, it's, it, honestly, I, my favorite comments are like, nurse, she's out again. Because like every time I feel like there's like a different vibe in every single video. And sometimes I'll like shock them every now and then like, nurse, she's out again. Come yeah, get her. Yeah. And I'm like, Shut keep up. us fucking guessing. So you, how strategic are you in terms of your content creation? My manager's like probably laughing right now because I'm not strategic at all. Like when I tell you, which but bitch be posting. No, oh bitch, and that be is posting. the most important thing. That's what I mean. I'm like I'm doing organic. Sometimes she'll be like, "What are you up to today?" I'm like, "I don't know." I'm like gonna, you know, as my day goes. I'm You're like, like waiting for inspiration. To yeah, happen. I'm like, you know, I'm waiting for something to happen. <laughs> I'm waiting for some shit to happen to me. Like, I, then but that's you're also I'm like, you've created your own like mini farmhouse with all the oh. animals, so like shit's going down. No, shit is all. <laughs> and when I tell you, like, shit is always happening too. Like especially on the weekends because my dog is like so attached to me because we spend oh, so much time together. Like I mean, the only time I'm really gone is when I have to travel for work. Yeah. So I'm home all the time. I spend like 24 seven with her. So when I leave on the weekend, sometimes she'll like shit on the floor and I come back to shit on the floor yep. and I have to clean it up. So I'm like, yeah, shit's always going. She's down. like a cat. Oh no, she is. Cause my cat butter, when I leave too long, I come back, she's ripped up all the toilet paper yeah. and she'll never do it unless I'm away for like a little too long. Cats, especially, I feel like cats, like they got the, they know, I would say like if I left for a month, my, first of all, Molly like, is very dependent yes. on me. So like she would probably not be here anymore. Mm -hmm. The cats, however, my bills would be paid. <laughs> Everything would be figured out. Like I'd come back home and like my one, my cat Minx, like I swear to God, he's an accountant in his free time. Like I can just see him. Like, Mr. Minx? Yeah, Mr. Minx. I'm like, dude, these cats like know too much shit. I'm Kinda like a fan. Sometimes when I'm like watching them and they're like looking Same. at me, I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, they also have to see me take some dick sometimes. So I'm like, oh my God, they know a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, especially Minx, he's been around for a while. Like, like where you been? Yeah. Too late? Yeah, he's seen some men at my place. So. I don't know if you've done this, but I, I would like to propose that you do this and then okay. tell everyone how it goes. Have you done Pet Psychic before? No. Do you got a good one? I have. I do have someone. I'll see what I'll send it to you. I did it once during the pandemic when I made my mom adopt three kittens. Three kittens? Oh my God, at the same time? It was the most incredible thing ever. That sounds like a dream. Because we had, I had my cat, my parents had their cat, and then my Nana's outdoor cat had three little babies that are just in the woods. And I said, we can, we need to take them, in. take them in. And I waited for my dad to be in like a good mood, like he had like a good, good golf day. And I was like, dad, can we keep these cats? And he's like, yeah, whatever. And my mom and I were like, yes. So all COVID, we raised these fucking like house. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> I found this um pet psychic during COVID, get on the phone. And she's like, okay, I'm talking to Butter. And she goes, Butter is sarcastic. Butter is hilarious. She's calling the other cats fat. She Like, I learned all this stuff, and I'm like, that's Butter. Like, I knew she was funny. Now you, like, look at them, and you're like, holy shit. And then with the other cat, she was like, I'm sensing, like, a stomach issue. And the next week, he had, like, we had to take him to the vet for a stomach issue. So, look, do I want to be that girl? I'm like, I don't believe in it. Yeah, but I'm not. Okay, I, I'm not. I mean, I believe in that. I'm, like, I wanna, I'm easy. I, I want to like, hear what they say, like what they say, because they say how they like feel about you, what their mood is, what they feel about the other cats, and like I think we I'm, need to set I, this I'm, up. I'm like scared to know what <laughs> Minx thinks of me because I think he's much more intelligent than I am. So I just feel like he thinks everyone is stupid around. Him. Like, I just get this vibe where he just like, gives this like very intelligent, I'm smarter than you vibe, and I'm like every time I look at him, I'm like, damn, I'm like, insecure right Do now. Do the cats fuck with like people you bring over, like guys you see? No, not really. Um, I could definitely tell though, like they make it a point, especially Minx, like if he doesn't like a guy, like mm -hmm. my like last boyfriend, mm -hmm. definitely don't think he liked him mm -hmm. because he just like was weird towards him. Mm -hmm. His energy just like shifted completely. <laughs> then the new one, the new boyfriend, uh -huh. my he like has taken my my dogs and cats into like making them his own. And so Stop they cry. love him. Like my new animals love him, especially the cats, because he's more of a cat guy, I'm not gonna lie. But That's amazing. like Mings and stuff, they have like a very special one. They'll go around my kitchen island. Go, cat, like you know how cats like yeah. do this to like show that they love you. I yeah. they're called like headbutting. Yeah, he'll headbutt minx the whole way around the the island. See, like I would want to get married immediately. Yeah. yeah, What's your opinion on men who don't like cats versus men who like cats? Oh, if like men who don't like, but men who don't like animals. Period. Yeah, I just don't fuck with people who don't like animals. Like mm -hmm. I feel like we will never get along because I will literally let like my dog lick my mouth. Like I would let her lick my teeth. Yeah. You know, like I kiss my cats on the mouth. Like I'm sick as fuck. I don't care. Like everyone's like, do you know where that's been? I'm like, I don't. I Also cats are clean as shit. They are. 
Don't they? Have Pets to- are the cleanest thing. That's what I mean. I'm like, they're cleaner than fucking I am. They're cleaner you know? than me. So I'm like, I am really bad with my animals like that. So I'm like, I can never be with someone like, my boyfriend now is kind of like a little bit of a clean freak. Like yeah. I'm a clean freak, but in different ways than he is. And he, I feel like sometimes he's like, mm. <laughs> but like, he doesn't say it, you know, he doesn't want to offend me. Cause he knows like that's, I'm in but my mom's like, shit. But like, you're connected to them. It's but like, connected to them. it's like how like you, you make out with me and my spit, like my spit is yeah. that cat's spit too. Like we, I truly do feel like I birthed them out of me. So I'm like, it's beautiful. This is mine. You know, I created this thing. So I'm like, but boys don't like animals. It's an absolute no for me Mm -hmm. but especially like boys who prefer this is a red flag and Mm -hmm. I've thought about this so many times men or people in general who prefer dogs I think over cats I truly think that they are sick in the fucking head Mm -hmm. because dogs are very dependent creatures you know they've been bred and bred and bred to depend on humans so I'm low-key convinced people who are dog people like you like that dependence right they like control they like yeah they like that shit me, I, I, I'm, I'm cool as a cucumber. Like, I, me and my cats, we, we just sit there and we like, they might fuck with me, they might not. Like, we'll just mm-hmm. sit in the same room and just stare at each other. Mm-hmm. Dog cover, she's like sitting on me. She needs me. I'm mm-hmm. like, I see. I, I have like a whole 10 minutes about cats and stand up. Like, <laughs> I could talk about it all day. But I, this is not a joke. I actually feel like dogs love people and cats love you. No, that, that is the greatest sense? quote I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. No, literally, you can steal it. Because I always joke, like, if, my, if a dog... If a dog is more excited to see a stranger than me, like we're getting in a fight that night. Yeah. It's like imagine your boyfriend whenever he seems a new girl licking her up, and you're, and you're like, oh, he just loves people. Like absolutely not. No. My cat does. My husband again. My husband fed her. <laughs> I'm married. He fed her. My husband fed her every morning for six months before she let him touch her. Oh, I believe that for. And sure. now he's the only other person she'll come out for. She'll mm-hmm. cuddle with him. But it took six months for her to be like. Okay. Especially if there's people at my house, like my cats, like want nothing to do with it. Yeah. Especially Minx, and like, people be like, "Your cat sucks," and I'm like, "Oh no, 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 no!" no, no. no, no. You understand? They take in energy. They know energy. I truly do believe that. Like, oh, yeah. my one friend Eric, <laughs> he calls my cat Garfield, and I'm like, and Eric's very drama. You know, he's very dramatic. I'm like, yes. Eric, don't fucking call my cat Garfield. I'm like, I don't mess with that, Eric. Like, that's one thing you're gonna piss me off now. <laughs> And he keeps giving me like Garfield and he's like the spicy Latina man. He's like, Garfield, stop fucking looking at me like that. So then the one day he's like calling him Garfield, whatever. He's like back. So I used to live in the studio apartment. Like he's like has my his back to the couch. What do you know? Garfield, Manx, gets up there and smacks him in the fucking head. <laughs> so hard. And now to this day, he's like, they have like this little stare off every time he comes around. Like he'll look at it because Manx is always in his catching. and he'll be like. Manx is like. Call me by my name. Yeah. He's like, I'm like Garfield. Like you watch your fucking mouth in front of me. Okay. It's time to play a game. Are you ready, bitch? Oh, I'm ready. It's called The Seven Deadly Sins. What are you greedy about? Um, oh, this is a hard one. Maybe. I'm definitely kind of greedy about money, mm-hmm. but I feel like food more than anything. Mm, what kind of food? Like, oh, any, not, I'm not a big sweets girl. Uh, give me, no, me neither. Give I me want cheese. Yes. Burger. Give me like the salty shit. Yes. That, like when people touch my fucking food, that's like a no from me. Mm. That's like a no. That's like my biggest pet peeve. I'll be like, my boyfriend always, t- he won't get a drink because like, I don't know if he's being too cheap or what. Mm-hmm. And they'll take sips of mine. And like to me, a drink though was like such, <laughs> I'm like a drink girl. You know, I'd rather go to McDonald's and get a fat sweet tea than have any food. True. So I'm like, that is like my meal. Like get your hands off my meal. Yeah. That pisses me off like no other. You're like, I also planned it out to have this amount to go in my body. Yes. Like I'm going to have every last sip oh i'm i love a fun drink like not even alcoholic i'll be like do you have any juices oh yeah me too. Any- but I'm a picky i love a though. chai that's my biggest that's my biggest flaw what what don't you eat oh everything <laughs> probably like nine you're, like, you're ask- like a kindergartner oh yeah ask me anything my manager my man i'm talking about my manager like my husband like, <laughs> like, like, my manager. <laughs> she is for now she literally no, yeah, she's, like, she's like you gotta go <laughs> we gotta part our ways she's literally like, she was like my first like she didn't know me too well at first and like she would like book all these dinners I went to LA for the first time it was all this vegan healthy shit I was like oh, literally no. get me the hell out of here I remember I went back home I don't even like I didn't even like burgers that much but I remember going home and just craving red meat I was like mom yeah. I want you to make me a fat fucking burger with grease and disgustingness like that's now, what I want to eat obviously there's nothing wrong with going vegan but actually when I went to Austin I got tricked I didn't know it was a vegan restaurant what? I ordered eggs sausage comes and I go mmm Texture's a little You're like, strange. Seems different. They'd, why would you not have in huge letters vegan? Vegan. Did it, everyone was there. I thought it was like the hot spot. I walked in and like, I'm like, why is there and now broccoli? All these people are like, they're cooler than you. I, I can't go into a vegan place because I just feel like they're like, I'm cooler than you. Yeah, they, they're definitely like, like oh, you drink cow's shit. milk? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fuck you, buddy. You drink cow's milk? I'm like, yeah, I do drink cow's milk. Have fun having osteoporosis. Is that what it is? You have like weak knees? Fun. I'm dead. Um, who are you envious of? Nobody. I love myself. 
Can I tell you who I'm envious of? Now that I'm thinking, my cat. Oh, oh, cats for sure. Do you ever cats. look at your cat and you're like, if I could switch bodies with this bitch? Cats who have like great owners, <laughs> like like my, like myself, I would do anything. I would do anything to be them. They sit all day. They eat. They Get shit. Pet. Yeah, they do whatever. And like, if I feel like find people, the comfiest place and just lie there. And people who love cats, like, don't really care what their cat. Like, their cats can do no wrong in their eyes. Oh no, she. My cat runs the household. Yeah. For sure. Oh, same. Like, if my cat's somewhere, I'm like, don't touch him. The second she like walks on my chest, is like, oh, she's ready for me. Yeah, and I like, I literally sit there like this. Like, in the mornings, like my my cats, like some of them like to like come. Some of them, some of them. <laughs> that Minx is like very much like I'm not really. He does his own personal bubble. You know, he's too good for that. Yeah. Baby, however, he's clueless. He has not one brain cell. <laughs> He comes up and he's like, he just wants like pets. He'll like be like, yeah. and I'm literally like, oh, I'm sitting there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do I pet him? If I pet him, like, will he move? You know? So you have to like balance that. Your line. butter will fall asleep on me. And obviously, t- you know how they have their routines to finally get to that place where yes. they come down. So it took her like 10 minutes to finally get on me. And you're sitting there. You're waiting for it. You're, and like, then I think the remote's coming. like right there. And I'm like, babe, could you get the remote? And they're like, you're right there. And I'm like, no, no, no I can't. I literally can't. I, the fact that I'm even talking right now is a risk. No, I, it's, <laughs> speaking when you have like a cat in your hand, you're just like. Don't breathe. Just hold it. I'm, hold yeah, it. no, because I'm like my belly's pressing on him. He's gonna be like getting all mad because like some, they're only good. Yeah, I feel like for like ten minutes. But they love your heartbeat. And yeah, when you get a kitten, like Butter, she was found in a dumpster in the Bronx. Sweet girl. I kept putting her on my chest as a kitten, and now that's where she still loves to oh, be. Oh, that's nice. And it helps my anxiety. Apparently. I would like try like Minx was such a little shit. Like I tried to <laughs> like stick him on my chest. And be like, You're gonna stay there, and he like didn't. He was the worst kitten I've ever had in my life. He was so fucking bad. <laughs> then then baby came along. Like baby, he's literally just baby. Like I don't know what to say about him. He's baby. Did and- you choose Minx because he was really cute? Because he looked like Mango. Yeah. That's if I- you choose cats based on their looks, like <laughs> that's when you, you tend get to get the asshole. You have to. I don't care, care how beautiful these kittens are. Go to the one that comes to you. No, and Minx did not. Come. I <laughs> found Minx on Pet Finder from like Minx random saw shelter. You and puked. No, definitely he was by himself at the shelter. Like, cause they like it was. I don't know. They were like he's being fostered, and they basically just take them to this house whenever they're getting adopted. Yeah. And I drove an hour and a half away. Didn't tell my parents. My dad, I was like, he's going to kick me out of my house. Like, my yeah. dad's very much like, you don't fuck with me. Like, yeah. I told you no. I meant no. But not when it comes to animals. Oh, my God. I was, I was literally shaking my pants the whole way there. It's like storming. I'm like, this is a bad omen. Like, I shouldn't be here right now. <laughs> Got the cat. And it was like, instantly, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, what do I do with this thing? Like, my parents are going to kill me. I took it upstairs to my room. My mom came in and I was like, my dad had no idea. For like three days, I was hiding this cat. My dad was so mad. And then, of course, he fell in love with it. And then but he loves it. Then the other ones, yeah. Like, my other cat's baby, I just kind of was like, Minx needs a friend. Mm-hmm. Minx, this this baby was a cat for Minx. Yes. You know what I mean? But sometimes, like, I thought Butter was bored. And then she didn't fuck with any other cats. So I was like, really? Oh, she lo- she hates other cats. Really? She is a Leo. Well, she then- she wants just all the attention to herself, and I have to respect that. And I feel like girl cats are a little more like true. You know, the boy like- cats they're like we're hanging. Truly, they're like guys. I'm like, didn't he fuck your ex? Yeah, like, like that's we- Jason. He's great. Yeah, they're like I don't give a fuck. They're like <laughs> we we can chill together. That's that's literally how my my boy cats like they all get along so well with each other. Like none of them give a shit. Like I could bring any. Everyone's like, be careful. You have to introduce them slowly. You're gonna like. <laughs> I'm like, dude. I know my fucking cats. Yeah. All right. I bring them. They take a sniff and they're like. Okay. Okay, he's cool. Take one sniff of the ass and he's, like they knew each other their whole lives. He's cool. Um, what do you overindulge in? Like, what's your guilty pleasure besides money? Like, what are you gluttonous about? Oh, food. Absolutely food. Yeah. Food is like a main topic in my life. Like, yeah. I, when I tell you, like, I eat like shit. But like that, to me, if I had to give up eating like shit, it just like life would not. How do you good. offset it? I don't. I don't really, I don't do any exercise really. Yeah. I mean, to be 22. Yeah. No, that it's like, I, I, it recently happened. I used to still be like cool when I was 30, something about 31. I used to like, you know, when you feel kind of bloated and oh, I I feel like that all the time. I, well, now I lie to myself. I'm like, oh, it's because you're PMSing. It's because of your period. It's because you just got off a plane. I'll come up with every excuse. Like, I'll never be like, bitch, you've been eating like shit. But when I was in my 20s, I would just be like, oh, I'm going to eat like a little cleaner this week. And it would just be like, fine. Oh, I'm not. I never <laughs> eat clean. Like, I, my, me is like, eat, like, I eat a sweet green and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, the life just came back to me. Yeah. But usually it's like, I be, I'm in Canes, McDonald's, mm-hmm. anything gross you can think about. Like, and I'm a DoorDash. Like, I do oh, every single fiend. meal. Oh, I fiend. Oh, but so. Austin has like some of the best food in the world. Oh, yeah, they do. But I still be eating like McDonald's. Yes, I'm yeah. like my boyfriend's like a big. He's sober, so like he's you know he loves like good my husband's food. sober too. Really? Yeah. So he loves like food. That's like where he's. We love. That. We love a sober man. We love a sober man. At first, I was like, I don't know, like I didn't know he was sober at first when I met him. Like yeah. we met on Hinge, but that's we, cool because if no. they're always talking about it, you're like, okay, you're still 
maybe it's uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm like, this is, and especially if like, he would have mentioned it before I feel like I met him in real life, I might, might have been like scared in a way. Yeah. Like I would have been scared off because I'm 20, like at the point I was 21. I'm like, holy shit, like my life kind of revolves around getting fucked up right now. Like I don't mm-hmm. know how we're gonna, how we're gonna vibe. And he's 28. So I remember like we met on Hinge and then I met him out in the bar one night. And because he was also at the bar, so I'm like thinking like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, tell you to this day I have no idea what I said to him and he was like it was you were kind of crazy the first night I met you but it's kind of like, cool that like you just fucked with like who he was yeah no not- I had no idea then the next day I'm like uh, try this like shitty vodka soda he's like oh like no I'm like germaphobe like I got so I was like ew mm-hmm. that gave me the ick I was like you care about my germs mm-hmm. and then I, I kept on watching him and he kept on getting like Topo Chico's and then I was like wait a damn minute. I was like, you don't drink. And he was like, no, he's like, usually I try to wait to see how long people notice. He's like, no, I don't drink. But he goes out with all my friends. He'll yep. stay up till 4 a.m. with us. Like, yep. he is so cool to be around. Even like, so, people never know that he's sober. Yeah, I've had girls text me and be like, I'm really nervous. I started seeing a sober guy. Like, what do you do? And I'm like, he's a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. human. <laughs> and I'm like, you're not going to have those like drunken fights. No. You're not going to have those horrible mornings where you're both just hung like, over. hate each other, hung over. Like, I'm like, when you fight, it's real fights. Yeah. It's not going to be like the No, I don't have shit. those like, or, or it's just like very one side. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, good morning, Jason. How are you this morning? And he's like, oh, I don't forget about last night. But he's pretty, I will say he's like very good at being. But also like, it shows that like they're driven. They can focus on shit. It's just hot. There, it is fun to in your early 20s date guys who are drunk all the time, but it starts to get like. Old, especially if they're old. drinking like. All that it's like a it's like becomes a problem. And also when you you're know? like, oh, you don't want to hang out with me, you'd rather us be at a bar. Like, why is that? Yeah. Why can't we just like enjoy each other? Be and normal and not have to be under the influence. And like, do you only like me whenever you're drunk? Or? Exactly. But there are yeah. some couples who are like in their fifties who like still get fucked up. Oh, all they time I just people from my home like small town shit. Small town shit. People, I remember like the football <laughs> parents would get fucking blasted at like We our- didn't know when we were younger. I'm like, why are they doing the Macarena? But the day it's like dancing. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're your parents are black out. <laughs> no, they 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 are oh wait, the football. I was always so jealous of the football people because like I grew up like my my family wasn't necessarily sober like my dad is sober uh-huh. but like I never like even knew the word sober though growing up like that wasn't like a thing like it's my not dad part just, of the culture of no small town or like y- Europe no <laughs> yeah, my dad just like didn't drink and I was just like okay like my parents don't really drink but then I I moved to Austin and he introduced me to so many all of his friends are pretty much sober he's a lot of sober friends and he has a, I feel like a, he has a lot better morals than me mm-hmm. you know we still go at it every once in a while because I just like to fight to be honest mm-hmm. with you I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like 22 I like to be toxic yeah but he uh, he goes like AA. Mm -hmm. every single week and that holds like you really have to have like a moral standard I feel Mm -hmm. like doing that shit well it is to be sober you have to like understand your brain it is a form of therapy because when you drink you don't have to face your feelings no no so he's He's very good at dealing like, expressing with his, feeling. his emotions. Oh, and so, and a man, any man who takes care of himself or is trying to improve himself in any capacity yeah. is a green flag. Yeah. In my eyes. And at first, I was like, oh my God, I don't know how to do this. Like, is he going to be a lie? Because, yeah, it was, just, it, it was a lot, but it ended up being like the best thing ever. And I'm like, date a sober man. If you have the chance, and over time, you're going to slowly like be less like, okay, I know what the night's going to be. I actually don't need that right now. Yeah. It'll be like in eight years. Like, okay. Later. Like later. I'll give it some time. Yeah. <laughs> and also you didn't like fully have a college scene no I that is why going out to me like I didn't even even like I basically was a community college so I didn't have any partying like me I was like getting drunk with my cousins at his like house <laughs> like, that that I just envision you in fields no like seriously I'm not even yeah. kidding like it was my cousin's house and they're all boys yeah and so they're all like older than me and that was the scene that I like drank in mm-hmm. and then I went to college but I, I dropped out of college I had to transfer to four university and then I dropped out but I still had signed the lease and I'm like bitch I'm gonna pay $800 a month for nothing you know I'm gonna I'm gonna live on oh, this so college you campus. Lived there? And yeah, so I lived there and it just like was like we would go out maybe like on a Friday. It wasn't crazy because it was just like small little state school. They weren't like crazy partiers or mm-hmm. anything. So it wasn't until I moved to Austin where I was and in Austin, let me tell you, they'll find a reason to drink for anything. Like I tell you, when I first moved there, they'd be like, let's I would like meet with people from different brands. I'm like, let's just get a cocktail. 3 yes. p.m. on a Tuesday. Let's just yes. get a cocktail really quick. Yeah. Everyone's always They'll be like, hey, the sun's out. Yeah, let's let's have a drink. <laughs> so when I moved there, I was like, I remember there were times where I was drinking like four times a week. I'm like, oh my I went from like never drinking to drinking four times a week. Then it slowed down and then I was single again. So I was like, let's rage. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I kind of went through like in the summer I have Lyme disease, not to like make everyone feel bad about me, but if you do bully me, I do have Lyme disease. So it's something to think about. Do you have you talked about that in public? Yeah, I've talked about it. It's like I'm pretty much good for the most yeah. part, except for like But you had weather. some bad. Yes. Oh my God. When I got diagnosed at first, I was the sickest I've ever been in my life. <gasps> I remember sitting at the hospital being like, they, I thought they were going to diagnose me with cancer. Like I was so sick. Was so this sick. from a tick bite? 
I guess I never found the tick in me though. So and, and nothing. It, it was just like I literally woke up one day and I I, remember I used to work at a coffee shop as a barista. And I remember like being like so sick at work and almost feeling like I was gonna throw up. But it was like the worst out of body headache. It was so strange. Then I threw up a couple times. You know, went to the doctor. They were like, Oh, I don't know what's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. And then uh, went back again. And I remember I, I went back because I couldn't move. Like yeah. I woke up the one day <gasps> and I couldn't move. I was like, Oh my gosh! Like what's what's going on? Like any slight turn in my neck was like. Bow. And they were like, Maybe you have viral meningitis. Like we don't know. Jesus. Went to the hospital and yeah. I got diagnosed with Lyme disease, but within the medication getting in me in like two days, I was like back to normal. Thank God they diagnosed I know, you. I know because some people like if you don't get diagnosed quick enough, like you get your whole life's like fucked. Pretty yes. Much. Yeah. So mine only noticed in like the summer. So this summer I kind of went through like a grandma era of not going out because of the, <laughs> oh, oh my God. I probably like, I'm like, oh my God, I only drink once a week. <laughs> because that damn heat in Austin, I couldn't do it. Like, oh it would, no. I would go out and like my, I just like I was going like, to hit the ground. Every time I walked outside, I'm like, oh my God. But, you're dehydrated and drinking yes, and you had to have a cute outfit. And if you have boots on, mm. miserable. So then now, you know, when the cold weather started to hit again in October, oh, I was a wild girl again. I was like, I'm like, girls, let's get fucked up. Mm -hmm. What's going on? But all my friends are older, so they're like. I actually feel like I started saying era more because of your TikTok. I know. I I told myself I just you're so good at no, but you're so good at coming up with like a funny era. That's my era. I'm in so many. I do have to say, I don't want to creep you out that I'm obsessed with you, but you just like really are part of my algorithm. No, I love that though. <laughs> I love that so- when people get on their fucking app. That's I'm like the first. Like you're part they hear of that voice, and they're like, "Holy shit!" It's what? Her. What is she? like? I don't have to search. You. I just know you're coming. You're gonna find yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So I'll if find the internet you. was like, "I'll fuck I'll f- with you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When was the last time you experienced extreme wrath or anger? Every day, like reading my comments every day. Like I get, <laughs> I get so pissed off. Like it's not funny. Like I get put, pissed off more than a normal person. But I feel like you. Do you like any? No, I do. That's you the sick do. part. I yeah, love it. I have <laughs> like a sensitive little like. Pussy, and I will look at a comment, and I'll be like, ah! So now I can't look at it. I don't. No, mine it. gets me like riled up, like in a like a way that's I'm like, <laughs> and then I go. The then, honestly, that leads to like my. I feel like my craziness in my TikToks. Like even if I'm not addressing hate, or I'm just like really like giving people my all and my, all my energy because I read some shit that like makes me kind of angry. Do you but feel I like better it. after event. Oh yeah. Oh good. Oh my god. Like especially like, on those days where I have like a mental breakdown. Like whenever you're talking about that video where I was like, "Fuck you guys. Yeah. I'm gonna do whatever I do." I cannot explain to you how amazing, like, I felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I was like, I was so scared from the second I started social media of like this cancel culture because that's that shit is scary. Like I, it's definitely gotten better. I think we're kind of coming to a, like a realization that it's like just stupid shit and creators are finally being like, you're not gonna cancel them. Definitely think like that was like a weight lifted off my shoulder. I was like, I don't care. But I also feel like you don't come off like psycho, like meticulously driven it's more like you was in the moment stupid shit you believe in yourself yeah and you're like this is what i'm meant to do yeah it's not like i need to go and become a billionaire you're like this is who i am and i know i'm gonna be successful doing it and i think that's what i feel like sometimes like the haters like struggle to understand i feel like sometimes they're like she thinks this shit out and she's and i'm like no no when i tell you i wake up every morning i roll out of bed I do whatever everybody else does and then something comes to my mind, I record it and like that's my job. Like I don't think I'm better than anybody else because I have thoughts. No, I literally (laughs) think that you've been yourself through this life and you've been like rejected and pushed into all these difficult places and you found like your fucking lane that is accepting you. Yes. And the people who come for you, you're like, bitch, I've... I've I don't realize that. Like, yeah, like, and I don't want like sometimes like when I see comments that are like, "Oh, I'm upset that you did this or that." I'm like, no offense, but like I don't want you around. Like if you're gonna be that upset and you're gonna you view me as someone who like isn't gonna make mistakes, like I don't want those people watching my videos. I want the people yeah. watching my videos who see us as equals and yes. see us like you're gonna make mistakes. You're living your life. I'm just watching you as entertainment. I like the people that just acknowledge me for entertainment and like we can vibe in real life. And well, that's the thing when you when you start thinking of these people as like a cool girl at a bar who's being mean to you, you're like, no, no, no. The cool girls are like, understand, they're not trying to yeah, come for you. It's no. literally these people you would never fuck with. No, I'm like, yeah, I'm so like, when I do the math and I've never met, this is the biggest thing too. Going out on the weekends is so relieving for me because I meet so many girls in Austin, especially because like Austin's just like a party tourist, whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's so many college kids there. Like I meet so many girls every single weekend and I've never once like had a girl be like, I don't like you or you've yeah. done this and it pissed me off. I realize you know it's the so haters, fake. the second they meet you, they want a photo with you. No, exactly. That's so that I'm like, what am I scared of? Like what all was this scary shit is so fake. When you get big enough, it then becomes cool to like hate on you but oh. then you have to come to terms with the fact that like for that many people to hate on you means you have star quality <laughs> well I think that happened to me like I think it happens to everyone just out of nowhere yeah it's like I felt like everyone was on my team like you deserve the most yeah like, we love you how are you not verify like that type shit and then it seems like one day I just woke up and everyone was like mad at me and I'm mm-hmm. like wait why is everyone angry at me now it's like- called the tall poppy syndrome where like if your poppy grows higher than others then they need yeah. to cut you down it literally just like switched I'm, I'm not even kidding it felt like overnight like wait w- did you start during covid like when was your yeah. first pop off and i would say that to people i'm like i got lucky like i'm very understanding of the fact that like 
I mean, I think I'm special because I'm a Leo, but like yeah. I'm, I'm very understanding of the fact that like, I got on TikTok at the perfect time yeah. where people were, it, it was still so cringe to post videos of yourself online. People were like, oh, like that's kind of cringe and people make fun of you. Yeah, I was late. I didn't yeah. do it during that time. When did you start? Like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Like see, like a lot of people were like, that's kind of cringy. Like, I don't know if I like that. I saw enough people blow up that I was like, you're stupid. If you yeah. No, stupid to not get on the bandwagon and do this shit. Yeah. So I literally just started posting kind of like diaries or story times or whatever. Just like talking but about But you my had life. the balls. You were ahead of the game. I guess I, I guess I was. I mean, she's a trendsetter. I did love like I think I have to give like a shout out to like Tana Mojo was like my favorite like YouTuber watch like growing up. You know, like oh, no. like so like, I was always like loving the raw stuff. Uh -huh. So I feel like that's kind of what it, like inspired me. Like all the raw people. Like I never really loved that like fake stuff on YouTube that was like get ready with me like a day in my life and it's like the I most can't. beautiful aesthetic like I'm not gonna lie I try to make those videos on TikTok and I'm like <laughs> let's be honest when I'm making those videos is when I'm the most miserable I'm hating my life I'm crying I'm throwing up in the bathroom but I'm like burning a candle I'm like this is my nice marble island that I'm renting this is I don't own it but I rent it and it's gonna look so aesthetic in these videos but in the inside I want to die it's like it's like when I'm posting these crazy videos of me going off on people when I'm like feeling sunshine and I'm like oh life is good <laughs> you're literally the, this is a weird reference but you're the John McEnroe of the internet who is ja John McEnroe my two <laughs> Young. <laughs> okay, so he's a professional tennis player. Oh my god, I'm from sorry. From the 70s. Oh, who, so he's been here. Yeah. He was like iconic, but his thing was he would get really mad at the ump and like curse him out, and then he would play better, and he had like the best personality. Good. Like, I want to meet this man. Is he still alive? Yeah. I want to meet him. I want to meet him. I'm going to talk about it. John McEnroe's the shit. I feel like it is a thing. Like, I feel like sometimes like- Because some people thrive on it, and then some people wilt with like, like I can't do anger. I just cry. Oh no, like I, I do thrive on it. Yeah. And I feel like a part But you're that friend that like, I could see in the bar, like me being like, that person just did something fucked up, and you go- you don't do anything, I got you. Oh, like ever, my friends were always like, you make me so much more confident. Like Trent, my assistant that I just hired and my little best friend, <laughs> he literally was like, being around you just for, like the last couple of weeks, like I am so much more confident in myself. And I was like, that's crazy. But I'm obsessed. And, I, and especially because like sometimes I'm like the most insecure person ever, but like you gotta, you gotta fake it till you make it. I really believe it. So even if I'm not confident. Everything is smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Everyone is faking their shit, especially in this time and age in TikTok. Like oh, you, gotta you know way more than the fucking 35 year old CEO somewhere who's yeah. trying to tell you shit. And you gotta realize that people like if they see that I'm like weak on social media and if I'm always crying I'm so insecure like I hate myself people are gonna feed off that shit they love like haters love like looking they at whatever blood. they can they want, they want to take a low blow so I, I'll get on there every day I'm so pretty I'm so funny um fuck you or guys. when things are going bad for you I feel like you're really good at being self-deprecating and yeah like and knowing, not taking like, your shit too seriously no and I think people <laughs> I feel like a lot of the time people think that I'm like they're like oh mean girl energy mean girl energy and I'm like <gasps> no I hate that is because think about it that's the meanest thing you could say to someone I know like call me ugly call me whatever the second you start calling me a mean girl I'm that's like, the shit that like hurts me I'm like they try to hurt you I, mean, I am to everybody I, I will say that I give people the same energy they give me like if I meet someone and they're great I, I will feed into that I will never just be like mm. but I'm telling you if someone gives me that bad energy like these hate comments do Oh, I'm ready to go in. <laughs> I'll match your energy, okay? Mess with the bull, you get the horns, baby. And I live by that. And they're like, you're on social media. You can't do that. Yeah, I fucking can. I, I can. I love that you're this like teeny blonde that just packs a fucking punch. But also like old school 60 minutes out of Pittsburgh. I get it. Um, also, now that you're managing someone, like he's part of your business. Yeah. How, is, has it been hard to manage him? Like, what kind of stuff do you have him do? Because it is work. <laughs> it is work managing someone. No, it someone. is. I think I definitely, like, opened his eyes. He was like, there's a lot more, like, behind the scenes than I thought there was. It went into influencing. Like, I definitely just thought it was going to be, like, oh, take a picture. Okay, we're done for the day. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of fun together. I will say that. Probably sometimes too much fun. Yeah. Like, it'll be, like, mid-work day. And we're like, should we go get our nails done? <laughs> and then Haley's calling me. And I was like, would you guys get done today? We're like... Um, we're at the nails. French manicure. Right no, but we do get a lot of shit done. Like we have, a, he has a good balance. I feel like with mm -hmm. me, we'll be like, okay, we have to settle down and get serious. Mm -hmm. But he's also become like my best friend outside of work. So it's like, but we're doing shots really together. Good. We just got tattoos together. Like we do yeah. it all. Well, yeah, because they're become really a part of your life. It's it's oh, not yeah. like you're working in an office like. And your job is you. It's oh, your who face. I am. It's so fucking intimate. And you know all the most personal details. I mean, I give everybody it needs the most to personal become, details It becomes me, a personal relationship. He has to deal with those, like, when I am in those, like, maybe fits of rage and I'm, like, seeing comments that are getting anxiety, he can, like, pick up instantly on, like, my anxiety. And he's like, what's wrong? Like, I know you're not, like, I know your energy. Just, like, I just felt energy shift. It's, and, and he needs to be able to read that on you. And also, I like to have someone that I know that, I don't have to talk to if I like I can go we can just sit together yeah, and go on, our, on phones. our phones for like two hours yeah. and then 
be like, say whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I have to like be polite. Keep a conversation. <laughs> yeah, I don't you really, know. That's literally the, I want us to just be ourselves. Everything is super natural. And I like, like I want to be like, like a cat. Most, yeah, I feel like that's like the most <laughs> important thing is like we can sit there on our laptops and like not speak to each other and he'll just be like, oh, did you get this done? I'm like, yeah. Exactly. And he could read you based on how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. When videos go viral though, like, you cannot be looking at the comments. Oh, I will say that. When videos go, like last night I had a video and I, like, this morning I looked at it and I almost had like a million views, like 800,000 views. And I saw one comment that said, who are you? And I was like, I know these are going to be fucking brutal. Like, yeah, like once mine hit the like incels, in oh, it just, female it stand up. Bad. There's just nothing to gain from it. No. Like, but I just, I, honestly, having men haters though must be so funny. Oh, I, I, like, I, I love it. Girls are like, they just like think really hard. Like, I, that's why I know like the girls on who, who make like my Reddit page. I know they're women who make Reddit pages about me because it's like thinking really hard and like catty. Oh, no. Girl shit. No men are talking men shit. Men are about so you. brainless. Men will be like, this bitch is going to be single forever. Oh, I'm you're ugly. You're fucking ugly. You're okay. Like, yes, uh, like call, something better. Literally, it's just like fat, single, and ugly. I'm like, like cool. If I had a nickel. Like, I wish this the comments like that. <laughs> yeah. the girls are like you get interested. she's being malicious and she's thinking really hard about this and I know she's Dude. purposely be and like she has Dude. alternative she's not holding motives. accountability for her to, uh, yeah, what I'm the like, fuck does that even mean I would give, make me a boy influencer in a minute because I know they don't stand, stand that shit you know <laughs> when was um when was the last time you let your pride get in the way of something so like your ego with like whether it is like friendships or career I feel like mostly it's relationships because mm -hmm. I never want to say I'm sorry. I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a lot better at it though. <laughs> I've gotten a lot better at being like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like not going to give like a full explanation like I used to mm -hmm. or like, like I'm not at that point yet where I'm like, I'm sorry because I'm like, we'll speak out my feelings. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time I'm just like, I don't want to bow down to anybody. Because yeah. I feel like my first relationship ever when I was in high school, I feel like I was almost like bowing down to him mm -hmm. and never again. I will never bow down to a man again. And I think that's why like, I have good luck in most of my relationships and like why I feel like all the men that I've ever dated would date me again. Hey, not to brag, but I think all the men that I've dated would date me again yeah. because I'm like, I hold my ground, you know? Well, the f first time you're with a guy who dims your light and you like lose yourself in it, you realize like, I don't care how cool he is. If I'm still myself, yeah. then I'm happy. Yeah. But if he makes me feel like shit about myself, I don't care if we look good in an Instagram photo together, if people think he's cool, yeah. that is, you're dying inside. And it's so funny because I'm like literally dating right now like a 28 year old who does like finance shit I don't even honestly I don't even know what the fuck he does like doesn't I'm, matter like, I know what I don't know no one knows but like you know people know. on TikTok will be brutal to him like when I do post him and they'll be like I hate him and they get so involved and I know like you know you're putting your life out there like what do you expect but like sometimes I like, read those comments and people are like she's way too pretty for him she's way too good for him and it's just like you don't know he's a great person like deep down, like yeah everyone has problems no they literally don't know anything and I'm like he treats me so well that it's like it's insane when I see those comments I'm like dude I don't care if you think he's a little fucking nerd or whatever like mm -hmm. he treats me way better than I don't want no, some sexy Instagram model oh you know boyfriend I mean famous girls are the worst I people couldn't handle in the it. world I couldn't handle it oh. especially like if a guy was like make, like I was making a TikToks and I was like dating a guy who was like doing like the mm -hmm. lip syncs like oh I want a bad bitch. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, no, we're not doing that. And plus, I met one guy like, when I was at community college. He was like this beautiful man who yeah. went to community college. And yeah. everyone, everyone wanted a piece of that because community college is small, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember like, I, I got to talk to him, you know. We, <laughs> we got to text a little bit. And the girls hated me. The girl like literally were talking about me on their Finstas who went to this college. Yeah. And they're like, she fumbled her bag because I, I was like obsessed with this like other dude I was dating at the time. Well, not dating, but like, you know. Yeah. And they were like, she really fumbled the bag. I was like, I don't even know you. Like, what? We go to community college. Like, who's so pissed about this? But I remember like, like, we went to Starbucks together one day and I remember he wouldn't shut the fuck up. And I was like, you know what? I actually realized I don't want anyone who's like me. I want someone who's the exact <laughs> opposite. Like, the fact that you had like that big of a personality kind of pissed me off. Like, I don't need it. I need the quiet man. Like, I love a man who can keep a conversation, mm -hmm. but he's just like, well, who's a good listener and who like cares about you? Yeah. What's essential? Well, you see these hot guys dancing on TikTok and these hot guys on Instagram and you forget that that is 1% of what a relationship is. That you have to actually sit with this dude on a couch and listen no, to him. No, I know. And it ha oh God, I'm just ooh, having somebody, it can be nice. I feel like having someone in the People forget. Media, like in that industry, it's, it's nice to get like, you know. Yeah. Advice or you guys can kind of know what each other's going through, I guess. But I love the fact that, first of all, all my friends and my boyfriend, like, they're all normal people who work nine to fives and like mm -hmm. get up and do their shit and they could care less. It makes me feel so They probably better. hold you down. Oh yeah. Like when I'm, when we're out for like drinks and they're like, oh, this would happen in my office job today. And I'm like, I got canceled. Like, <laughs> guys, like they- the Third time this week. Yeah. For the third time this week, this is what they, and it's like, oh my God, like you realize like how like for, unserious for the this job actually is that I'm like, yes. oh my God, like this, I cannot believe I let this shit get to me. Like this is my job. Like my friends have actual real life problems and I'm like, 
someone's pissed at me right now because they mm-hmm. like my I don't know what the fuck I did but they're mad at me <laughs> yeah. something like I didn't I don't know so you have perspective yeah you have so much perspective of how like how crazy life really is and how lucky I am yeah and that's the only reason honestly probably why most of the time you get hit it's because people do like they're like like you're telling me in, in a heartbeat you wouldn't be taking a job talking out your ass all no day one who's happier than you is coming for you oh and I would say like no one who's more like there's no like doctors probably writing hate comments <laughs> on my page like I can guarantee you no fucking surgeon brain surgeons on my page and they're like <laughs> fuck you I'm like no it's definitely not they're that. busy being surgeons saving lives yeah like they're busy doing shit <laughs> I do have to say with the guy thing one thing I've learned after like dating in my 20s is that tall guys hot guys rich guys can be bad people Oh, and we yeah. forget that, that they can be annoying, yeah. that they could be like shitty, but you, society gives you this pretty privilege when yeah. you assume because this guy has a jawline, he's going to give you everything in life that you're looking for. But it's so funny because with girls, I feel like it's almost the opposite. Like they're almost like demonized. Like you got people like Madison Beer that are hot as shit. And I feel like people will come up with any excuse in the books not to like her, yes. tear down her music career or whatever and be like, well, yeah, they associate she's hot. hot girls with like being, being dumb mean, and, and being, mean yeah. and all this shit. But and men, these men are, are assholes. I'm like, that's why I'm like truly not into like. I'm, I'm not sure what the word is, like conventionally attractive men. Like my boyfriend, I think my boyfriend's so hot and so cute. Yeah. But, you know, I get like, punk, like, oh, he's, he, I don't think, I think you can do better than him. Like I'm not dating this like six foot eight tall man with curly brown hair and like blue <laughs> eyes. Like that's not like, and that's not my vibe either. Like I don't want to date someone where I feel like. My best friend is gorgeous. And yeah. I always joke, she likes short hairy men. Good. That's Good all for she her. wants. I, she wants to, like she's like, I'm gun. the hot one. Yeah. He needs to be a literal troll yeah. who makes me laugh. Yeah, that's uh, literally <laughs> someone can make me laugh and someone can just like listen to me. Dude, I dealt with all this shit online because I was with this like with like situationship with this conventionally attractive man. And everyone's like, she's in love with him. She's in love with him. And I'm like, she lo- I'm like, look, did he piss me off and upset me? Yes. He never made me laugh once. Yeah. I was never gonna to- marry that man. People get way too into online like relationships. That's the thing oh. too. Like my last, and they think they know what's going on, and you're yes. like, you have no idea what went on. You you have no because f- like I had my reality show try to portray it. You yeah. have your own kind of reality show, but they like see it through their lens. Oh, like no matter what, like they're gonna have their own perspective on it. And like I, I mean, my last relationship was like just like it was almost actually like we got along super well. Like we vibed. We had very good co- like a connection, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, I almost like threw up. I was burping. <laughs> we like a relatable could, queen. We, we could shoot the shit back and forth, <laughs> me and him. And I feel like the audience saw that, and because he was very charming, whatever, they were like, oh, "This is couple's gonna get married." But like, it was just kind of like a cute little fling, and like we both liked each other, and it ended, and it was whatever. But people online like did not want to let that shit go. And I was like, guys, it was like three months. And you're how like, I'd you let it go. Yeah. How are you more emotionally attached to this relationship than either of us? But were? also, they'll be the first one to tell you if you want to be heard about something that you should move on. Oh and when to my. move on. Don't even get on. <laughs> I love like when I'll be posting. I'll like post like I used to date this God, I am such a whore. I have boyfriends. <laughs> like I used to date this guy who's six foot four. I did from like four years. The girls who now now uh-huh. basically like, his parents like wouldn't let us date anymore. Like we were dating for a like year and a half, two years. And then Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was g- genuinely a Romeo and Juliet era because I basically like made a comment somewhere on TikTok one time on a live was like do you, does his family like you? And I was like, let's not answer that question. And his little shit of a sister told his family I was talking shit. I wasn't talking shit. Talking All shit I said, is a general term that they will use to take you down. I know. And so then, you know, me and his family were beefing over that. And then someone asked in a live, like, oh, whatever happened to that? And I'm like, I'll bully his little sister if I see her again. <laughs> Joking. His family's full of like six foot monsters. <laughs> like, I'm not going to beat the shit out of a six foot person. I'm sorry. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight at all. I'm a princess. I'm not going to fight anybody, first of all. Okay. I talked big shit, but I wasn't going to fight. Now, keep in mind at this time, I was 19 years old. <laughs> I was like, I'm a child. I'm like barely out of high school. And so they were like, you guys can't date and whatever. And so I was like, oh my God. This but shit. being with someone who like you don't feel supported by the family is oh it's it's like a whole thing in itself like thing. we were sneaking out or else he got kicked out one time he actually did get kicked out of his house like mm-hmm. it was a lot but I would talk about it and I you know at times I would be like oh yeah we're with each other but then his family would like kind of find out or whatever or have suspicion so then I'd have to be like I'm not with anybody it was just super confusing and me being young and like wanting to post about my life it just made it so See, much more difficult people yeah. would be like stop talking about it why the fuck do you still talk about it yeah. and it's like because this is me I share my life with you guys like I'm and you're processing it the way you want to process it yeah also I'm with an older man so his parents are dead so that is a bonus in some I ways. was gonna say like low-key I'm like orphan nice. men no yeah like not having to date a man where you have to deal with their parents is like nice and like but I've, I like kind of put his parents on a pedestal because I've never met yeah. them and I was oh, like, so you'd be like, 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 like you don't have to face like what if they were shitty people and and look I look at him and we never have to be like well, whose parents house do we go to I'm like, like well, I guess I'm going to my house for Christmas house. get to meet the family get to get super close to the whole fam and the cats <laughs> final yeah. question okay what 
if I'm interested to hear what you're going to say. What advice do you give to people and the listeners on how to cope with your hell? When it's your dark time, you're going through it. What are your methods of surviving? Honestly, my animals. Like, that's why I'm like, I don't know. These people who don't have pets are like fucking psychos to me. <laughs> because I'm like, what do you come home to? Like, do you even feel happiness? Like, what the fuck? Like, I walk in my door and even though if I have the like, shittiest day, whatever, like, my dog is so excited to see me and my cats, just like their energy. Yeah. My, I feel like my, my well, cats, your cats are like, welcome. Like, so healing. Yeah. It's like th- being in my own little home. I, I love being it, which is why like I'm looking into buying a house right now. Uh-huh. I'm like, I want to build. You're my creating own an oasis, yes. Because yeah. like my apartment's cool, like I love it, but I don't own it, and it's not mine. And it's like, oh, I live in an apartment, I have to see other people. Like living in my own little sanctuary where no one can fuck with me is like the greatest thing ever. Like I am very much a person who likes to be alone. Mm-hmm. And you know, some people are like, nobody likes to be alone. I love being alone. Me too. I love like I love having. But when we're out, I'll give you a hundred. Oh no, same. I'm gonna give you one hundred fifty. Like, that's what I mean. Like if I'm out, like I'm performing. <laughs> yeah. Like I. We are such Leo. I am. Tired as fuck when I get home. I on a dance on that table, bitch. Yes, but same. when I get home, you Nothing. won't I'm hear silent. from me. Silent. Silent. Unless I'm like in a rage because I saw something <laughs> piss me off, and then I'm like. Da, 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 da. But other than that, like I can sit there on my couch and not say anything, and then I bring that energy to. T- I save my energy, okay? Yes. I get out and I'm like, da, 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 and people you like, get your energy from being alone. Yeah. And once you build it up, then you go. Let's unleash the tiger. Yes. And then you go out and yeah. you let the lion go. What other signs are you? Oh fuck if I know. Okay. I just I just like to be like I'm a Leo. Let's all yeah. I mean Leo just oh. makes sense. I wish I was um, like a triple Leo. I know I'm not that. I wish I was just so I could be like improve something. Honestly, I feel like you'd get arrested. Oh oh, someone who's like a triple Leo. Yeah, you're a threat to society. <laughs> you yeah, you're you're bad for your own good. Like you can't be around. Like us times three, absolutely not. <laughs> um, absolutely put me back in my mom's pussy. Um, yeah, no, literally. My parents, I think, are already like we created a monster. <laughs> yeah. Like my parents are like holy shit. Especially now, you're like, like oh, like, you're moving to Austin. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> especially them like financially respond like or not responsible, financially independent yeah, now. Yeah. Like before they could hold shit over my head, like don't do that. Yeah. Guess what? Your car's going to get taken away. Now you're like, you're going to off the phone bill. <laughs> now I'm like, I'll post anything I want. Like I'll be like, I did mushrooms last night. And my parents are like, oh my God. Like I'm like, what are you going to do? I'm dad, kick me off health insurance. Cause guess what? I can pay for it now. I can afford it. Like you're going to start something you can't finish. Dude, that is power. It, no, it seriously is the most powerful thing ever. Cause I always got that hell over my head as a kid. Like yeah. we'll, we'll take my, we'll take your car away. I'm like, do it. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, yeah. I'm obsessed with you. I love um, you. This was like, this was so This crazy. was so fun. I'm like, they're going to be like, I'm, I feel like I was like part of I didn't even ask you a question. No, I really feel like, <laughs> I feel like there actually like wasn't any like question. I, I can't even remember the question didn't that I was asked. It just kind of like fumbled into this thing. We fumbled the bag to win. To win. And. Sucks to suck. That's happened when you're a Leo. <laughs> That's what happens when you're a Leo. Yeah, things just work out for you. We just manifested this podcast. Like you, girl she literally was like, so you're just going to wing it. And I'm like, watch, watch us. Well, because she just came in here. Like, I was just, I just, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm like the same person that I talk about when I'm like, people are like, oh my God, you're the same person in real life. So I was like, oh my God, I was like nervous. Like, what if you're going to get in here and be like, <laughs> then it's like three, two, one. Happy. Like, I was kind of scared that of that. Yeah, so like, many times. I was scared of that happening. So I'm like, like, I'm literally on my phone and then I'm like, <gasps> Ken, like nice to meet you. So I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, what if it is like that? Like I don't know how I'm gonna handle it because I'm like, so, but no, it was. She just walked in here, and was like, yo, what the fuck is that? Like, welcome, let's get this shit started. And I'm like, okay, wow, this was a lot I also, easier. Like, than I knew I was gonna fuck with you. Like I decided it. Oh yeah. Um, whether you liked it or Can not. Can you imagine though if I was like horrible, like, and like, the energy was just like not there? Like, what would you do? Like, have you ever had that where like yeah. the energy was kind of off? That's see, that's why I couldn't do guest podcasts. I've had energy, or like they're kind of like withholding from me. Yeah, you're like, just give me it. And I'm like, we could have a boring pod if you want, but like, yeah, I want to make this shit. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just trying to feel something. No, I definitely. Like, sometimes I like, I kind of like want to stir the pot a little bit, and, like we're Leos, and have yeah. That's my, you know? literally the one thing because as my husband being wiser, and I'm like you is when I younger in my career, I was very loose lipped. Oh, I talk all the time. I was very loose lipped. The only time I get in trouble is being loose lipped. But it also what made me funny because like you're not overthinking stuff. You can pay me to shut the. Fuck but up. as I got, and also like I go on a pot, I'm like, I need to give him a clip. I need to oh, give him something good. Too. I mean, it's being illegal. I'm like, that's I'm like, I gotta give him something. Do not, I'm I telling you. I gotta give the hater something to work with. I gotta give my lover something If to work you do reality TV ever, because you're probably gonna be asked, you're either gonna blow up, but like it's gonna be a nightmare, or like it's gonna ruin your life. Okay, yeah, so I'm not doing reality TV. Don't do it. Because like you will literally sit in there and be like, I'm here to work. Like, what do you guys need me to do? And you won't be mean, but you're gonna serve, and then they're yeah. gonna take it, and they'll be like, How do we make Oh, how do we make this look like terrible? How do we make it look like terrible? And the people are just uh, like, feed off of that. Because the more you give them, and you know, as Leo's, we're like, we are here. Oh, I'm to here perform. to perform. That's what I mean. Like, if I was on The Bachelor, I'm like, you bitches are lying. When like, they're like, you'd be the star I, of the show. I came here to find <laughs> love. No, you didn't. If I got on The Bachelor, I'd sit down and I'd be like, let's be honest. I'm trying to get my Instagram followers up. Engagement's been down lately. Um, I know I'm not gonna fall 
in love with this man. Like all these girls here are dumb if they think they're gonna fall in love with this man that they know for like three minutes. Like I'm not worried about it. Also, I'm only gonna like him because everyone else is liking him, and that's just it's psychology. Just, just, yeah, I'm like I, I don't think I could fall for that shit. I think I would if I went on like The Bachelor, I'd be like there for myself. I'd be like. They always say second place is first place at The Bachelor. Oh yeah, because then everyone's like, if they loved you, especially if you're like America's sweetheart. I would. Never, I don't know. Can you imagine? I would end up. I would be like, this is not. This is a misogynistic well, show. Sometimes I wish that I was America's sweetheart, and then I'm like, no, fuck no, I couldn't get away with half the shit I do. You know, like some of these people that blew up for being like cute little lip syncers, like they gotta watch their shit. Me being a little loose lipped, you know, like people have. But that's what it is. It's so innocent. You're just loose lipped trying to survive in this planet. Yeah, and sometimes people forget that I'm 22. I'm like, guys, yeah, you act like true. I'm like, you act like I'm 35, like loose lipped saying all this shit. Like I'm 22. I should still be in college right now. Yeah, like, like let me live. And also like. Loose lips, don't let us sink ships. Let us have some fun. No yeah. one's, we're trying to entertain. It, it, being loose lipped is not a bad thing. It's like we're talking about vaginas, I, by the way. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, listen, I was like, this goes for body positivity <laughs> and everything else. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, if you oh. think a loose lip vagina is okay, we need justice for the loose lips. Clap mouth. your labia, cause for those loose lips. Ken, where can people follow you? Like, Hello. all the shit you're doing. Give me the tea. If you guys want to follow me, you can <laughs> give me a follow on Instagram, at Ken Yurik. I would really appreciate it. E-U-R-I-C. Um, E-K-E-N-E-U-R-I-C-H. And TikTok is the same with a little dot in the middle. <laughs> um, if you guys are looking for a luxury animal company, it's coming out soon. I love Mango. It's not out yet, though, but just, like, remember. Wait, Love Mango so cute. Love Mango because of my first cat ever, you know. So I had to do a little shot. My mom started crying. Like, we were crying, like, when I told her at dinner. She, like, had no idea that's why I named the company. And then my, my manager was like, cheers. To love mango. My mom was like, "Wait, what?" And my mom's so emotional. She'll cry over anything. She'll be watching. She'll be like, "Kennedy, I just listened to that podcast <laughs> five times in a row. It was so beautiful." Wait, I hope she likes this no, one. Oh yeah, she'll be like, "Oh my god." That my was mom so listens cute. to it too. Does my mom will it? call me and she, yeah, she's she'll be like, "That was an amazing interview." Yes. And I'm like, "Mom, we literally talked about dicks for yeah, an hour." That's she's like, "It was so funny." She's like, "Just watching you guys go back and forth. There's just so much energy. And I just, I loved watching." I oh just yeah, can't people are gonna feel like they're on fucking Well Butchered after this. Oh, I hope so. Get on it if you have. Well, if it's test it out, prescribe it, check with your doctor. Don't listen. Because I shit. can I can't approve smoking weed, so I, I just I'll yeah, anyway. Um thank you guys for coming to hell. We have to stop this pod. Unfortunately, we could talk for hours. Um we love you guys. Talk later. Bye. Love y'all, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.